first. And uh, uh, if you want to just start it. In. Okay, thank you, Calvin. You got the recording? Got it, I see. Okay. <clears throat> All right, uh, Pete, shall we then? Here we go. Good evening, fellow commissioners and the general public. My name is uh, Mike Champness. I'm the chair of the Transportation Advisory Commission. Before we begin, please note that this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the county website and on YouTube. To conduct this meeting wholly electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by new state legislation and FOIA, the Transportation Advisory Commission needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. It's a bit cumbersome, so I ask you in advance for your patience. First, because each member of this commission is participating in this meeting from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of members is participating and that each member's voice is clear, audible, and at an appropriate volume for all of the, all, all of the other members. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. I'm asking each commission member participating in this meeting to state your name and location from which you're participating when I mention your name. Uh, at large, Linda Sperling. Reddick District, uh, Kevin Morse. Kevin Morse and Burke. Okay. Uh, I'm in uh, uh, McLean. Uh, I'm here. Uh, Felicia, uh, 100 Mill District. Felicia Woods. Felicia Woods, Herndon. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mason District, uh, Roger Hoskin. Roger Hoskin is present in Mason District and near Seven Corners, the ice cream cone and the Falls Church. <laughs> okay, that's how it's known by. Um, Mount Vernon District, Pete Sitnick. Uh, Pete Sitnick is here from Mount Vernon District. Okay, the district is uh, vacant. Providence District, Jeremy Hancock. Okay. Springfield District, Eric Thiel. Okay. Sully District, uh, David Skiles. Okay. Fairfax Area Disability Services Board, uh, Christy Garden. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're at we're at half right. We're at five right now, so we don't have a quorum. But uh, we'll, as I say, we'll go forward with the uh, with the meeting here. I see someone just uh, just joined us. Is that one of the commissioners, perhaps, that just joined us? Okay. Um, in fact, I, and later on, I will ask the folks on the uh, on the screen to identify yourself so we can keep track of there. I know one, uh, at least a couple of them. One's Calvin, and our uh, distinguished guest, I know, um, Mr. Uh, Michael Faslow. So, okay. At this point, I will pass the virtual gavel to Vice Chair Sidnick so that I may be heard to make the requisite motions. Thank you. I accept the virtual gavel. I now recognize Commissioner Chaffers. Uh, thank you. I move that we have determined that each member's voice can be adequately heard by each other member of the commission. It is so moved. You have heard the motion. Second. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Mr. Chairman, the motion carried unanimously. Thank you. <clears throat> I next move that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this commission to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend any such meeting. I further move that this commission may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated audio conferencing line and that the public may access this meeting by the Microsoft Teams platform or by calling 1-571-429-5982 and entering the phone conference ID 821-800-620. The phone number for ADA is, is 711. Access information is also available at the TAC website at fairfaxcounty.gov uh, transportation uh, TAC meetings. It is so moved. Second. Is there a second? I think Kevin seconded it. Already, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, was there a second? Yeah, Brother Braddock, just Thank Kevin. You. Is there a discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed, say nay. Any abstention? Mr. Chairman, the motion passed unanimously. <clears throat> Thank you. Finally, I move that all of the matters in the agenda previously furnished and posted on the TAC website are necessary for continuity in Fairfax County government and or are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of this, of this commission's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. 
You have heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Roger. Thank you. Yeah, your yes. brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to work on that. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Any abstention? Mr. Chairman, the motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. We'll now start the tax business per the approved agenda. So, um, okay, I have no uh, um, remarks to uh, uh, open the meeting. Um, I would like to uh, uh, welcome the public and guests um, and uh, um, ask if you could please identify yourselves. Um, I see one, two, three, six circles and symbols down there. Calvin, know who you are. Michael, I know you're here. Um, other folks, could you please let us know uh, 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 who's who's here this evening? Uh, Kay? Yes, hello. Can you hear me? We can. Great. Um, this is Christy Garson. I'm uh, just on my phone ah. at the moment. Fantastic. We got you, Christy. Quorum. We have a quorum. We're good to go. Hello, Look, Christy. Hey. Sounds like somebody hello? left the back door open. <laughs> 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 You're in your car? I'll, I will mute. Yes, I am. <laughs> no, that's okay. Maybe you ought to put the top up. It sounds a little windy. Okay, well, thank you, Christy. Glad you could join us. We do have a quorum. Um, next, I see a hexagonal B. Who might that be? Okay. A, uh, I, I think it might be Brett Riddle. I don't know. Um, that's a, a guess. Um, MM. Who's MM? This is uh, Marcus Moore. Fairfax County ah, Department of That would be my guess, but I didn't want to guess. Okay. Marcus, got, appreciate it. We got an expert in the room. There we go. Fantastic. Um, MF, Michael Feshlow, I presume. Uh, welcome, Michael. Oh, thank um, you. Uh, HK. Hey, good evening. I'm Adrian King, working for Fairfax County DOT. Transit Service Planning. Ah, okay, fantastic. Welcome. Glad you could join us. All right. And uh, I, I I suspect the B is Brent. We'll go out that as a working assumption, but that's okay. Um, we now know that, that folks are here. So very much I uh, want to welcome everybody. Thanks everybody for uh, for coming here. Uh, because we have a quorum, we can now move to the acceptance of the previous meeting's minutes. So we'd be pleased to accept a motion to accept the minutes um, uh, as provided. Um, and then once the motion is made, we can uh, make some adjustments if we need to uh, to the minutes. So does anybody so like to make a motion? Uh, OK. Uh, Mount Vernon District, so moved. All right. And is there a second? Second. Braddock. OK, fantastic. OK, there's been a motion on the floor uh, seconded. Uh, to accept the previous meeting's minutes. Is there any discussion on the motion? On the bottom of page two, uh, the penultimate paragraph, it says unshaded areas. I think it's supposed to be unshaded areas also. Okay. To be reversed. All right. That one was easy. The only other one uh, is just a quote. Uh, Second sentence in page three. Mm -hmm. It says if a if a developer sold requirement is is that word correct sold? I wasn't just wasn't sure. No, I'm not sure myself. <laughs> let, me, let me bring up a copy of these notes. Yeah. Let me... Well, no. maybe it's a technical change later if it if it's incorrect or something. But well, what was I think the... we can. Get... We can certainly, yeah. yeah, I think we can consider a technical and conforming change. Yeah, I think you can uh, with the, the approval. Okay. Um, okay. Are there, is there any more discussion on the uh, uh, on the motion? Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, would like uh, would uh, uh, 
call a question on whether uh, uh, the uh, all those in favor of uh, adopting minutes and allowing technical and conforming changes to be made afterwards, uh, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Okay, the motion carries unanimously. The uh, the ayes have it, um, and so the meeting minutes are approved uh, with technical and conforming changes to follow. Okay, all right. Now we're into the uh, uh, meat of the uh, the business this evening. Um, we're very fortunate to have with us uh, Michael Feshlo and um, and uh, sounds like Hygiene Kim, I believe. Uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, coming uh, this evening. That's a topic we've been looking forward to uh, having for some time, Kevin. Appreciate you keeping it uh, on our radar screen and and uh, making sure that uh, uh, we, we went forward with it. Um, you know, we've had various discussions about you know various modes. We've had discussions about you know bus service and and metro and things like that. Um, but this is our first time to have a conversation looking at a particular uh, demographic here uh, with some of the economically underserved areas. So I think it's very timely uh, to have this conversation. Uh, both in general uh, to, to sort of see how things are going, but also with our uh, um, joint meeting with the Board of Supervisors coming up uh, just to uh, have this in our in our hip pocket in case there's some things that we want to raise or discuss during uh, during the meeting on that on that topic. So with that, I would like to uh, turn it over to uh, Michael uh, for the presentation. Welcome, sir. And, and again, we're very glad that, uh, that you could join us this evening. Well, thank you, everyone. It's uh, good to be here. Um, once again, my name is Michael Falchow. I work with the Transit Services Division of FCDOT. I have Heijun Kang here with me tonight. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me and I am clear enough. Um, I do have a giant clog in my throat. As I always <laughs> seem to have one. Um, I'm going to share my screen now, so just give me one moment to set everything up here. Does everyone see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I cannot see if anyone's going to raise their hand. So um, maybe someone will tell me if they're going to raise their hand. Let me just double we check see, something. Uh, uh, hands are, are appreciated, but also uh, as long as folks don't jump all over each other, which we're usually pretty good at, uh, we, we uh, um, allow commissioners to ask questions as, the, as, as things progress. Um, so, uh, um, okay, we should we should hopefully be okay here as long as things don't get out of out of hand. Well, hopefully they don't. I, it shouldn't. Be. Nope. Well, <laughs> well, let's get going here. Um, we're going to be talking about tonight is the uh, transit strategic plan, and how does equity fit into that transit strategic plan? And this is really the key document that we at uh, Transit develop um, on a periodic basis. So our agenda right now is going to be going over what is the transit strategic plan, an overview of that, its goals, object objectives, timeline for developing that document, our public outreach that we've been doing over the last few years for the document. How does equity actually fit into the development of the service plans identified in the document and then how do we use prioritization, which is heavily based on an equity test to um, rank our services that we'll be looking at into the near future? So, but first let's go over what is the transit strategic plan? Right now we have what's known as a transit development plan. Uh, it's not much different than the transit strategic plan. Both are required by the Department of Rail and Public Transportation. But the big difference is, is that the existing transit development plan, which was voted by, in by the board back in 2016, is a six year document updated every five years. This will now be a 10 year document updated every five years. Inside the document, what it's made up of is pretty much exactly the same that the transit development plan is. So it's really the planning horizon has has changed. So. As I mentioned, it's pretty similar to what we have as our guiding document today, approved a few years ago back in 2016. What we have to do as part of this document is we have to review our route performance, what routes are doing well, what routes are not doing well, and why. And then we have to look at assessing each one of those routes, assessing the areas that need services, assessing new areas that need services. Where do we need to shift our resources around? And as we identify those things, Obviously, if we identify improvements that need to be made, 
how are we going to be doing those improvements? What new capital will we need? What new operational services do we need? What maintenance do we need? And then the last element of the plan is how do we plan on paying for all of this over a, net, a 10 year plan? So that is the challenge where where many agencies have a big challenge is how do you pay for something that you haven't even budgeted for 10 years down the road with inflation? So that's always a big challenge, but that's why we are, are transportation planners. So <laughs> what is in the uh, strategic vision? Well, right now, this is right out of our existing transit development plan, and it's going to go into the transit strategic plan. It's all about providing equitable, safe, reliable, clean, and effective public transportation services that as a component of our multimodal transportation system here in the county. We look at safety, choice, efficiency, and quality of service. Those are not ranked in any order. They're just as important as each other are. These are our key key elements all underneath the umbrella of equity. So how did we start developing this plan? Well, a few years back, we what we did was broke up the entire county into five different pieces. And each one of those pieces, we treat it like its own transit development plan. We uh, did a whole analysis of that area, tried to defi define new services, but the real key of that service evaluation was in fact what we call a route optimization. How do we maximize what we already have to meet the needs of the community without adding additional resources? So that was our key, key piece of what we call our bus service review plans. And we broke them down into Reston Herndon, in cooperation with the new Silver Line, the Franconia Springfield area, the Centerville Chantilly Vienna Tysons, and that's uh, gonna be impacted by the new I-66 um, outside the Beltway toll funding, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the um, express lanes. And then the last area was actually the Richmond <laughs> Highway, a feeder bus system that combined into combines into the um, bus rapid transit system that is being planned. So each one of these had their own public involvement process, multiple public meetings, um, surveys. So that all feeds into the transit strategic plan. So everything was developed in that plan was moved into the transit strategic plan. The transit strategic plan had its own uh, stakeholder meetings, its own public meetings. We also um, did an onboard survey a few years ago and a marketing survey, and both of those were countywide. Hey, Michael, uh, yes. quick question. Uh, where where would Annandale and uh, Columbia Pike uh, areas approach Route 7? What, what are those five areas would they come under? Well, An Annandale came underneath the uh, Springfield area um, simply okay. because we combined it with our Route 401, 402 that cuts right through north north and south. So okay. we, we, we put it into the Franconia area. Columbia Pike, maybe the... Uh, Columbia Pike was also in there, even though we do not have service, the transit, our transit services don't really serve Columbia Pike. At this point in time, that's covered by WMATA, and they're doing their own plan, which we'll be a part of, and they're going to be doing that over the next six to uh, 12 months. So we'll be uh, able to get some input into uh, the Columbia Pike area. Ah, interesting. We'll get into that a little later, but all right, thank you. Okay, so our timeline for the, our our project is we're really looking at as in terms of steps. So we uh, did our first step, which was to review our plan, look at our strategic vision, which we just talked about, I'll go out and do some public outreach. What did people need on top of what we already gotten from all the um, route optimization studies and then do performance <coughs> evaluation and analysis. And then based on that, develop um, improvements and modifications. So we got a long list of improvements and modifications. I think it was somewhere around 140 different service changes. We then brought that to the public, got input based on their, their um, 
their review of that. And then we use that to modify and start developing our prioritization list. That's where we are today, developing the financial plan and implementation plan. We're going to be getting meetings with the board members one on one as we talk about service changes in their individual districts. And then once we get feedback from that, we're hoping to go back to the board um, in December or January as part of a BTC meeting um, or at least in December. Um, bring the uh, financial plan con concept to them, uh, get some um, additional information from them, and then hopefully by the end of the fiscal year, which will end in June of next year, we will hopefully get, bring uh, the board the full document for approval and then send it off to the state. And then we can start implementing. <clears throat> so a little bit about the outreach. Um, just to tell you the big number first, uh, based on our total surveys that we've been doing for with all our different studies over the last few years, about 12,700 um, respondents. So that's a significant number of people across the county has given us a lot of input. Our market survey back in 2018, about 2,600 respondents. That was statistically based. Um, then onboard survey, we went on onboard the buses got about 3,700 respondents to our survey with really focused, that really focused on what do people who are using the transit system, do they actually need? The market survey looked at why aren't you using transit? What is the barriers for you using transit? And then the TSP had two rounds of public meetings. So we got almost 4,000 respondents through the uh, two rounds. So we got over 12,000 individuals um, gave us information. And in addition to that, our buses um, have intelligent transportation systems on them where we can actually see where people are getting on and off the bus. Um, throughout the entire network and throughout the day. So we know exactly when they got on and where, where people are getting off and by time of day. So that's about 8 million um, data points that we can use and we overlay that on top of all this other information. Does your market survey uh, correlate at all with income level? Yeah, there are a lot of our surveys, yes, that looked at uh, one of the questions that we always ask is, um, income levels and then we subsection that out and do cross tabs based on information if what your income was do you use transit do you not use transit so we can correlate and make sure that we're actually looking at people who actually use transit and use that information to tell us what they need <laughs> okay thank you so, i have a question similar okay. question um how about uh, people with disabilities self-described because that also taken into consideration um and not on these surveys and typically in the transit industry we don't really ask those questions um unless they so decide to give us that information because it is a sensitive thing and uh, many times if you ask people if they have a disability you also are also asking them where do they live so now you can find out exactly where the disabled person lives. And that's actually been something that the U.S. Census has leaned away from in the recent years. Before, when I first started in this career, we actually could find out where the disabled individuals live. We do get um, information on our buses uh, every single time the ramp goes down. That becomes a geocode and we know exactly where the ramp goes down to let a, a scooter on, but we do not explicitly um, focus in on disabled population and where they actually live. Understood. Is there an opportunity for uh, qualitative input at some point? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely um, if people so. Yeah. yeah, from community people, um, we understand that, you know, Qualitative data is what we get a lot of times when we talk to individuals on the buses, um, at public meetings, and at other ven venues. Uh, Michael, one question. Uh, you said your buses had, what was it called, intelligent something, tracking? Intelligent transportation systems. Trans we call no. it Clever. It's mm -hmm. called Clever. The, the actual company is called Clever. And it allows our buses to know where they are on the face of the earth, know how fast they're going, count how many people are on the bus, 
um, and it does a whole lot of other calculations um, in terms of how fast the engine is running, is it running efficiently and effectively, and where people got off, our max load during the day, allows us to do a lot of what used to take a lot of manpower to go out there and count people. Now the bus does it for us. So that is definitely some good information there. Uh, it does well, what Wamada's fleet have the same uh, tele, uh, clever yes. stuff or are they dummies? Yeah. Uh, no, they they got they got clever. I'll, in fact, they do have clever. Actually, okay. a lot of the transit agencies in this area actually have purchased the Trevor Clever system, uh, and so you know it, it's something that most agencies across the country have some form of uh, intelligent transportation. We also call it APC or automatic passenger counters. Okay. And um, smaller agencies don't have it, but agencies like Fairfax, which we're a pretty sizable agency, have this. It um, allows us to get very timely information about what's going on out there. Thank you, Michael. Uh, but good okay. for later. Appreciate it. So what we heard from the public through all these public venues and and uh, information retrieval is that people want these five areas of concern increased frequency especially in off-peak times and on weekends um, greater span of service and once again off-peak times um, and on weekends more hours of service more days of the week they'd like to have faster travel less buses meandering around through neighborhoods and not picking anybody up. Let's try to get to where we're going pretty quick. And then connectivity, making sure the bus actually goes to some place that people actually want to go to. Those are the major employment centers um, and easy way to get to their bus stops. And then of course, making sure that all the information about the transit system is uh, user-friendly and easy to use information. <laughs> so, Really, the, the, this is the, really the most important slide we have tonight, which is about equity, one Fairfax. And this is something the board has been um, very, very keen on. How do we as um, a government entity deal with um, equity? Equity does not mean equal. It means um, you know, a fairness. How does some people need more than others? So what we did, and this is not new for transit, equity has been something around for the last 50, 60 years for transit, um, simply because of the individuals who use transit. So we started this planning process with looking at demographic inputs, uh, looking at low income households, minority populations, uh, limited speaking populations, um, senior citizens, students, anyone who needs transit. And we basically took all that information and we mapped it. So we know where the demographics really are, who really truly need and typically use transit. Then we took a look at what we call system inputs. And these are some of the things I've already mentioned. Our onboard survey, that gives us an understanding of what, how and why people are using our, tra our transit system and our buses. Our origin and destinations flows, where people are going to and from, we get that from our, um, our Clever system. We also get that from looking at the WMATA, uh, no, actually not WMATA, the MCOG model and uh, US Census information that tells us where people are flowing because typically even though um, transit is a subset of the overall travel market, um, people who use transit want to go to the same places that everybody else does. And then, of course, taking a look at employment centers, major employment centers, shopping, major shopping centers. One of these would be, for example, like um, Mosaic or, um, or Tyson's. Uh, educational institutions, colleges, high schools, and, of course, medical institutions and major employers like the military. And then, of course, we took all that information and we built layers of geographical information systems. So basically, we made a whole bunch of maps and layered them on top of each other and made some demographic comparisons to where services are needed. And that was our output, um, service equities and service gaps. And that allowed us to develop some criteria to try to rank new services. Will this meet the needs of the public or not? So as we went forward, 
with this process, we ended up with three tiers. Now, I mentioned earlier about our route optimization and our, our small area study plans that we did. And this is um, what we call our bus service plans. It looked at the demographic information that we just met, that I just mentioned, looked at travel patterns, and then it looked at levels of service. How much service are we providing along that corridor? Is it appropriate for that level? And how can we get people to move faster across the system? And then for the transit strategic plan, we did two layers of evaluation, very similar to what we did in the bus service plans. But we looked at that in terms of taking those sensitive populations and we looked at the gaps where, and I'll show you in a map in a moment, those service area, their service, there are particular areas in our county that when comparing all this information together, you identify gaps in service that maybe there should be weekend service there. Maybe there should be more like 15 minute frequency service there. That's how often the bus comes by. Maybe you should have a higher level of service there based on the level of population and the level of demographics that are there. And then, of course, the second step that we took is we took that all that all that ranking that we did in the first step and we ranked it again. And I'll get over that in a moment with very similar to what we did with the bus service plan. There's a lot of math here, a lot of calculations. Um, when we try to explain it to the general public, it does get a little heavy. So that's why we try to make it very light in this thing, because there is a lot of calculations that are going on here. So to break it down, if you could go ahead. just back on that, that's our um, question I had uh, on the uh, uh, demographic inputs. You talked about mapping those. What does that look like or what does that mean when you talk about mapping? Is it a physical map? Because I know you talked about that later. Or is it sort of a description of demographics kind of thing? It is a physical map uh, based on okay. U.S. census blocks. So but US not has, I'm sorry. to the individual uh, people. I mean, I know we talked a no, bit no, ago. We're, 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 not, we're, not, we're not doing individual households. We don't put dots on maps where, where they live. We have a, a um, census block group, which could be a sub area of the county. And we thematically map that. We give it a color in terms of intensity of uh, population, more, and it's a grading color so we understand where that is. And I can show you that in a moment, um, something that looks like yeah. that, so that you can understand what those, uh, the, how the size of those, and those vary based on uh, population densities within the area. And that's all generated from the U.S. Census. We take that information and we manipulate it. Okay. So right. what we did, we took all this, all those, um, the service plans that we came up with, um, and modifications of services, along with the, um, the equity analysis that I just showed you, and we broke it into the two steps analysis that I just mentioned. The first step was to break all those service, those 40 different service changes that we identified based on need and broke them into near term midterm and long term and basically we said where would one of those things where would one of those be so this way in the near term anything that has a very high score would go in the near term midterm and long term things in the long term would be things then that are either have to happen a long time from now due to their investment or they got a very low score um, step two was to go into each one of those, we call them buckets, the near term, midterm, and long term, and sort do a second sort based on another set of criteria. So this is a two sort um, evaluation process. So as I said, it was, was going to be a map. This map off to the left hand, right hand side of your screen shows you basically somewhat of the sizes of some of these um, census block groups. These aren't explicitly block groups, but it gives you an idea of what they are and the sizes of they are. And the entire county is filled with many, many of these. And so you can see that these are just certain areas that are having um, a particular gap of type of service based on the demographics. So that gives you an idea of the size of these things. 
Um, so as I said before, we broke it down into two steps. The first step was really taking a look at these gaps. The first score that we looked at was what we called implementation readiness. And that was anything that came out of those um, minors, the sub area service plans and what we call the route optimization. If it was already scored in that process as something that we could do today based on our basically our resources, let's get that the highest score because it's a low hanging fruit, something we could do today. Let's get that done. And then we took a look at um, the Council of Governments um, equity emphasis area map. And we took that map and we said, uh, any one of these service plans that we are coming up with, any of the routes in those service plans, do they intersect in these equity emphasis areas? If they do, we give them a point. And then we went through a series of gaps, which you can see off to the right hand side. Is there an all and areas that were identified with all day gaps or any of these services that we're thinking about improving? Are they intersecting with that area? Yes or no? Yeah, yes, they get a point. And we went through each one of those all through all 100 and whatever, 150 or so, 180 uh, service concepts. And each one of those would get a point. If they ended up not getting a lot of these points, they got put into the, lo into the uh, long term bracket. If they got a lot of points, they went into the, the near term bracket. And then I said, as I said earlier, we went into step two and step two said, while step one takes a look at a micro area a service, a route passing through a particular service air sub area. Well, what about the rest of the route? Um, you know, so we take uh, routes don't just go in little tiny circles. They cross counties. They connect many areas together. So what we took a look at is the transit oriented population. This is all that population we mentioned earlier, um, low income, minority populations, um, households with one or zero vehicles, things of that, those types of populations. And we said, where do they live and where is the concentration of those populations and does our routes intersect those populations and how many people along that route would be within this category? The more a route had of that of those sensitive populations, the higher the score it got. And then we took a look at the improvements in terms of frequency and span of service. The higher the improvement was in terms of frequency going from, let's say, 30 minute service to 15 minute service. And let me quantify that a little bit. And what I mean by 15 minute service is how often the bus comes by in the direction you're traveling in. We call that uh, frequency and that's a 15 minute frequency. Are we improving it along that entire corridor? Get a higher score span of service, how many hours a day and how many days of the week? So the more our service um, recommendation or modification improved the span of service, the higher the score was. And so it moved it moved service plans uh, or recommendations of different routes um, within those individual buckets of the near term, midterm and long term. And then we um went to the board um, btc meeting several months ago many months ago um got some input from that meeting we're going to get additional um board input uh, hopefully within the next month when we have additional one-on-one -on -one meetings as we talk about the financial plans and then of course from our public meetings that we had we took that information based on all their comments and made some adjustments to our prioritization list list and that is it that's all I have at the moment. Any questions? Yeah, how do yeah, we get on that? It. How do we get on that list? Um, yeah, I'm being a little sarcastic. It, that last one you you had was gaps in Metro Rail and VRRE, and I re happen to represent the Mount Vernon district. And of course, there's no gaps there because it, we don't have it. Um, mm. So, I, in the future, I hope we're on it. Um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat your I'm question just, again well, it's, it's about more the VRE? Well, no, okay. Um, this is gaps and all in the present system. Yes. And I, and I understand that. Uh, but if you go down in the Mount Vernon district and you scoot from Fort Belvoir north on the little line to Pendall, Woodlawn, and all that stuff, of course, um, there's no gaps because we don't have the service. I mean, that's that was just my point. Um, okay. 
And so, if, you, if you go back to day to that, that slide that you said where equity is, mm -hmm. I think that if you look for underserved areas, you'll find, uh, and I'm sure you see it, um, all along the Richmond High Corridor is where really people that need this sort of service are. And, and, and BRT is going in and, and adjustments are being made. I was just saying it'd be nice to be on this list now instead of on this list 10 years from now. Okay, let me let me make sure that we understand uh, that everyone understands what this map is presenting. Um, I, I, yes, I, I it, do it does. Okay, but, okay. but I, I just wanted to make sure everyone else is understanding it. Um, sure. th for reference, we only included the VRE lines and stations and metro rail lines for just yeah. for reference. There's a tremendous amount of bus routes that are in you know, this map that are not shown, and that whole. Um, Richmond Highway Corridor is in fact one of our best corridors in terms of transit use. Uh, Route 171, which runs from Huntington Station all the way down um, to Lorton, Lorton, is actually one of our best routes, usually in the top five. Yeah. So, and um, it runs till, I don't know, one o'clock in the morning on most days. So yeah. that's why you're not seeing a lot of gaps. And that's why we have the prioritization that we have where step one only looked at gaps, but step two looked at the entire corridor, the entire road, the entire route, and where was that transit propensity. So you're not seeing that. This is just one map out of 50 maps that we created to do the analysis. So yes, you're absolutely right. You don't have the type of gap that's here, but that doesn't mean your routes didn't receive points for other reasons. And I understand that. I just wanted to like to be on this map. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on other maps. Let me guarantee you that. And there, that okay. route is not going to go away, nor will the routes that are within that corridor going to go away anytime soon. In fact, we have some service planning in that area to actually improve several of the routes in that area, including up to moving some routes up to 15 minute service. Very good. I know the people that live here would appreciate any improvements along the highway and, and through the neighborhoods. Um, oh, yeah. It would be very much appreciated. But uh, I, I know we're still fighting the, the battle with uh, keeping like the 11Y bus and all that good stuff. So and that, that's not your purview, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have that battle going on, too. So, yes. OK, um, so, any other questions? <laughs> I've got a few. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned uh, this could be seen as a little heavy handed. Well, I mean, what you have to be when you've got that big of county and to, you know, make sure you're getting the bang for the buck. I, 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 you have to do all this analysis. But it, it, yeah, when I read the PowerPoint, it, yeah, this is this is a little dry. What I kind of was at the point you get final meeting with the BT. EOS is almost that you could do this video going into an under area and saying, you know, this was before, and this is what we're able to accomplish in the near term, where we're now getting service to this person, this this community, this apartment complex, um, and we're on a timely basis. And, and getting them uh, to where they need to go. Um, the, the second thing, you know, tra improving transit, you know, good, okay. Improving transit in uh, underserved areas, better. But then what subject that I'm glad presenting tonight, and it's a really excellent presentation, uh, you know, a year, two years ago, three years ago, equity thing kind of took a somewhere. I heard, you know, job center getting people to the job centers, and so you've hit on that a little bit. But what, what I'm wondering if there's a guy, a business in in the district, a business in Tyson, somewhere anywhere in the county, how are they talking to you in the study and saying we need people? here you know um is that working at all or is there any connection are they tied in with you 
Okay, well, um, first off, you were breaking up really bad there, so I'm probably not going to answer the question because I didn't hear Ooh. most of it. Um, but let me answer the, the question that I did hear, which was about employment centers. Um, it, obviously, we can't talk to every single business that's out there. That would, that would take too much time. We do do surveys. We gather that information. We talk to... Um, uh, we have uh, technical meetings. We have stakeholder meetings. We try to bring in um, the commerce departments, the different business organizations, and we try to talk to them um, and get some information about what is going on, what do they need. Um, and that's what we start with when we start doing any kind of transportation planning. We then also look at demographic information. And as, as I said, you know, we use that. Where are the jobs? Um, and that's one of the key focus areas is where are the jobs, where are the stores, where are the schools, where are the hospitals, not just for sick people, but also for people who actually work at the hospitals. And then cross-reference that with all what we call our boarding and aligning, where people are getting off and on the buses. That, that's 8 million data points of data that we get before the pandemic every single year. So we get literally millions of data points by time of day and day of the week that we can use and identify the clusters. And then we take that information and we lay that over, um, you know, land use, jobs, where, where are the jobs? And then we can start to see patterns, patterns of what's going on and what time of day is that happening. That's worth a tremendous amount of information. So we have information coming in through our stakeholder groups, stakeholder meetings, that's the qualitative, and then we have our quantitative data that we use. So we use both to try to figure out where people need to get to and when they need to do it. Hopefully that See, I helped. Think, yeah, but I think <clears throat> point I wanted somebody from the the, the equity part of the study, which is not DOT, uh, to be in on this call because they're they're you know you're talking to them, you're talking to the job centers, and you're doing your part. But who's who's then reaching out to the low income areas and say, hey, there are jobs at the other end of the county, and we have a way to get you there. I hope that didn't break up. <laughs> uh, what I heard you say is that, is there somebody going out to the community and saying, hey, um, at a particular location, there are jobs over there and we can get you there. Um, that typically isn't within FCDOT's framework, but no. we talk to those agencies and we talk to individuals and we try to identify the travel patterns that people would need in order to get to the major employment center. And let me focus re, um, try to say this without repeating myself. Um, one of the things that when I first got here over five years ago and I looked at the map and I've done transit planning all over the country is that we have a lot of routes that are out there right now that are what I call um, single pur purpose trips. You only use the route for that, just that one trip and that one type of trip. And if the business moves or if something else mo happens in the demographics um, or the employment centers, that route has no purpose anymore. So what we're trying to do is move away from that and move towards um, a network design so that no matter where you are, you can take a bus, get to another point where you might transfer to another route that gets you to where you're going. It's called an, it's, it's just developing networks instead of developing each and every single individual route independent of any other route just to serve a particular location. It's about doing coverage, but doing coverage within particular markets and travel flow patterns. So it's a much more complex way of doing transit planning, but it gets us away from um, building systems that are very percept, you know, very limited and actually would don't do very well during things like a pandemic or an economic downturn. Um, when you build an integrated network system, 
that allows the system to be much more have much more volatile. Vol excuse me. Um, mouth is getting dry here. Much more flexibility in dealing with ups and downs in the economy or in the market. So when we look at um, developing transit services, we're looking at the land use and the flow uh, in and out of, let's say, Tyson's, for example. It's one of our major employment centers. So before I got here, there was like four routes going to Tyson's, four or five routes. Now we're going to have more routes going there with more frequency, more all-day service, because it is a major employment center. And when we've talked to uh, Tyson's partnership, they said, we need more service. So we designed more service. When the Silver Line came out, is kind of open up, we've redesigned that entire system up in Reston Herndon to stop focusing on wheelie because there's no need for us to do that anymore because we have these new stations and using the Metro Rail as in fact a what's called a trunk line and then creating what's known as a multi-hub um, hybrid grid system that it, it functions like a grid, but it isn't on a grid because we don't have a grid street system there. And that allows people to make their choices where they want to go without us deciding where do you need, where do we need to move every single person to every single location? That That's why we call, I'm, I'm talking about creating systems and not worried about one person traveling from point A to point B. I'm moving masses of people to wherever they need to go based on a network. Does that help? Yeah, I, I think it kind of leads back though to my first uh, question, which maybe you didn't hear, but I, and, and it's actually really a suggestion that I think it, at some point when you're going before the board, the, the BTC or the BOS, have, you know, a, the, the equity, I don't know what this is called, but saying, you know, a year ago, this person really didn't have a good option to a job center. You know, here are some concrete examples. Now, this neighborhood, this apartment complex, they have, uh, 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 and you can give an example, what they're now working for this in Tyson. That's just a suggestion. The other, because I don't want to take up too much time, two other things. One, I, I used to, 10 years ago, I used to take some of our crew back home to uh, on the Columbia Pike, some of those apartment complexes. You said earlier that's under WMATA. So, what if FCDOT doesn't like or doesn't think they're getting served by WMATA? Are you are you monitoring that? Yes, we we do monitor that. Uh, FCDOT um, actually goes to the WMATA meetings. Um, Brent Riddle is the individual who actually does that, and I talk frequently with um, with Brent. And in addition, we actually have a meeting coming up with WMATA to talk about long range transportation planning for all the routes that are in Fairfax County. So we do talk we do talk to them frequently. It's been a little challenging over the last couple of years with the pandemic, and they've been dealing with some issues at WMATA. Then so they've been. Um, flexing their routes a little bit more than typical because of the pandemic and the ramifications of the pandemic. So it's been not business as usual um, dealing with them, but with them. But yes, I heard your first statement um, and I was just, I just clicked off the PowerPoint. There are some slides that we have created to show the difference between the number of people in terms of low income and minority population would be improved um, levels of service and total <clears throat> population. We've actually calculated how many more people we could get service to and how um, what the level of improvement is for those um, equity, po those populations within equity. We, we actually did that already and we've actually shown that information to board members in the past as we've gone through those these micro transit plans. And um, so we'll be showing that information again as we talk to the board members over the next month or so as we get ready for the BTC. So we're, we're actually doing that, but thank you. And the last one I think for you, if you picture man or woman 
February, January, just freezing, windy, cold out, but there's service, there's, you know, the roads are clear. Hey, do we now have a way, no matter what bus you're at, that you, you, you're going to know, at least like if you have a cell phone, uh, when, how, how much longer you have to wait for that bus to show up? Yes, we have that system. It's part of our clever system. It actually, um, people can actually go online. It's called Bus Tracker, and you can see the buses moving around. You can um, log in. The Every bus, bus stop has a number to it. You put that in your phone. You text it to that number, and you will be able to see how much longer you have to wait for the bus. So you don't actually actually have to go out there in the cold with sub freezing temperatures and stand there like the old days in the seventies and hope to God you don't freeze to death. Um, exactly. so we don't, we don't do that anymore. That's not part of our system. We, we have that information that allows people to manage their time. And for those routes that we have lots of people on, like the 171 that's along Highway 1 and the 950 up in Reston Herndon, we're trying to move those routes to 15, 20 minute frequencies. So people have a much shorter wait um, for those routes that have a lot of people on them. Some routes that have longer wait times we want to make sure that we, and this is our marketing department does this, communicate to them to use bus tracker and don't go outside until you're ready. And it's, it's the other way too, hot weather too. You know, there's yeah. a lot of senior citizens who can't deal with the heat and standing on their feet where there is no shade. So it, it's both ends of the spectrum. And then you have rain that comes at you sideways. So, and you don't have a, but not, we don't put bus shelters everywhere because that's expensive. So we, we have to be um, understanding to people's needs, trying to get on and off our system. So that's why we have Bus Tracker. And I'm, I'm glad you said marketing because they, they need to know how to, not only it's good that you have it, but they, the population, you know, telling them that it's there and how to use it. Michael, Evan. if I'm... If I may, I'd like to ask one question for you. Sure. Um, that slide that you had in very first beginning, you said it's most important one, and it, it had to do with equity. Uh, I mean, uh, the, this, there we go, uh, demographic inputs. Uh, by any chance, do you know if car ownership is in that pile? Because uh, only recently I've learned that you can actually track car ownership by population too and uh, Richmond Highway, about where that orange uh, underserved area, uh, only has 25% car ownership. Um, and so it's, I think it's a, a good number if you can plug it in there, it might, might give you even more, uh, more weight to this demographic input. Actually, that's included. I just couldn't put all the different demographics in there because the little box wasn't big enough. Oh, that's but, good. Um, yeah. Well, um, households with zero vehicles and households with one vehicle have already been included in our analysis. Excellent. So. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I heard that earlier. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I, I missed that. <laughs> but yeah. uh, thank you very much. But I, I learned a lot, Michael. I appreciate your time. No problem. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I do have a couple, but before I do, just see if there's any other commissioners would uh, like to ask uh, uh, some questions. Um, Michael, very much appreciate you uh, uh, joining us. As, as I've said, one of my questions was uh, sort of more towards the end, but I'm going to mention it now just because it, it's pretty obvious. So the relationship between the discussion here and, you know, it looks like you're at, uh, uh, tentatively scheduled to go to the BTC on the 13th of December to, you know, talk about the strategic plan update. I'm wondering, hmm, what's the connection? It looks like this is it. Uh, is this the same brief you plan to give or something like this uh, uh, on December 13th? Uh, similar to, but we're hoping to have more about the actual results of the plan. Once okay. we get through the fiscal analysis, um, then we'll be able to bring to the board the service that we plan to recommend over the next 10 years. That's what we're hoping to bring to the board, but we're not there yet. Okay. All right. 
Um, well, that's uh, that that's uh, uh, very much very important. Appreciate that. Um, we would like to see that as well because I think uh, we we're all sort of interested to varying degrees. And so, what what the numbers look like, what the projections look like. Um, some of the questions I had, you you really did start addressing, and and I very much appreciate that. One was sort of the economic development aspect there. Um, you know, one of the things that we've realized as we've talked, uh, you know, some done some of our prioritization here in the TAC, is the importance of being connected to economic development. Um, and so, appreciate you mentioning that. Um, is the economic development administration one of the places you go? Because I'm thinking they might have. The further out in the future you go, the less likely it is you'll know what's happening. But at least it's something. Are they able to give you some stuff that gives you, uh, you know, more targets to look at and other input? How how much do you work with them? We have worked with them in the past. Um, we we really been using the demographic information as a driver. Um, one of the key things that you we have to understand, and you said it already, it becomes much more difficult in the future. So we use trends to figure out um, what's going to happen in 10 years. The good thing about the way we do the planning is that every five years we we update it. So it's not a one time every 10, 10 year shot. And we, we take our crystal ball and we figure out what it is. If I had a crystal ball, I'd be a stockbroker and I'd, I wouldn't be talking to you today. I'd be making a heck of a lot more money probably. I don't know about right now, the stock market and all that, but, <laughs> but don't get me started on that one. Um, okay. so, <laughs> I used to have an econo I have an economics degree, so I actually, um, this is my second career. <laughs> so, okay. but yeah, uh -huh. so we have talked with, uh, um, economic agencies, um, and in the past to gather some of this information and we do talk to them. We do gather information from the planning department within FCDOT. We've also looked at the forecasts and those forecasts of demographics, they come from a um, multitude of different agencies across the, across the region. And as we use that demographic information and employment information that gives us an understanding of where things are gonna be in, in right now and into the future. Okay. Um, I have a sort of uh, related question, and I don't want to get into it uh, in, in, in too much because we're, we're getting a little late, and, and I know this would be sort of like a big topic and could very well be something that you deal uh, you, you bring to the board, but um, how you decide what goes in the near-term category, the mid-term category, and the long-term category. You know, um, you know I, I, obviously there's a lot of factors. Just would, uh, you know, how do you sort of uh, triage those things or prioritize those things to say, hey, this this looks to be a near term. This is more mid, and this is down the road. Well, that was the scoring metrics. What I have here on the screen, uh, for each one of those categories, a point was given based on the goals and objectives and the input we received from the public. So we gave everything was given a score as we pass through these different um, measures. They're given a score, and the ones with the best scores gets to go into the near term. Ones with the lowest scores gets to put, put into the long term. But we had to modify things because of the BRT. So some things which were match mesh, meshing up with the BRT had to go with the BRT. So they may have scored high, but we pushed them out to the long term because there's no point in making that adjustment until the BRT is there along Richmond Highway. So there were some modifications that we had to do there. But typically, we, we scored everything, and those scores were all based off of the items that we looked at earlier, which were these items, you know, yeah. those five areas of concern. So we created criteria for each one of those, er those areas of concern and created points for each one of those. And then we tested that um, with the public. We didn't tell them what the points were, but we said, what is important to you? And then they scored, they basically went through and they scored, this type of service is important to me, that type of service is important to me. And that's where we got all that 12,000 respondents. We use that information to give us what we call weights that scored these all these services that then gave things into the near term, mid term, and long term. As I said, there's a lot of math here. Yeah, clearly, and, and I think that it is. Am I correct uh, that that is something you're going to try and present to the board here in December? Some of those, as you say, you know, uh, you know, your service plan to the board of supervisors. What you think should be done in the near term, in the mid term, and long term? Is that is that what you hope to be able to present 
We'll, we will be presenting the results of the near term, okay. midterm and long term. We probably okay. will not go into the details of how the math worked because okay. I only get 10 slides. <laughs> and that takes like 12 slides to do that. <laughs> so it's yeah. exceedingly complex. And we've tried to do it in the past when we did our route optimization. We tried to bring that out to the public of how we actually did the math. And we lost the public. And then we got <laughs> input from, from the board members who were there and said, it's too complex. Make it easier. Yeah. So this is our attempt to make it easier, just telling them, telling everyone, these are the areas that we scored. And this is, we did a, we did a process. Because if you get into too much of the math, you're going to lose the public. You're going to lose individuals who don't play with this every single day, and then they lose it. So we want to just say here, based on all these parameters, this is the result. And based on the fiscal constraints, this is what we think we can implement over the next 10 years. So get down to the bottom line. And we're going to have meetings with the board members, hopefully um, in the next month or so, which we're actually going to get. We'll have more time to talk to them. We'll have a whole hour, which we can get into the nitty gritty and they can tell us, um, yeah, that works for me or no, that doesn't work for me. But each one of these these plans, these uh, fiscal analysis will tell them what they're going to get for the amount of investment the county is willing to make. You know. What you're seeing here is mm -hmm. basically, you know, the criteria, but we still need to say, where's the cut line? What can yeah. we afford? It's great to do everything, but you're not going to be able to afford that. It's, yeah. That's a lot of money. And it's, I mean, think about how much a bus costs. You know, yeah. bus costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it actually costs a lot of money to actually operate a bus. So you want to put it in the right place at the right time, and you don't want an empty bus riding around all day long. Um, you need to have people on it. I mean, you know, most buses, you know, will ride empty because, you know, it, it's ridership fluctuates around the day. So I've had yeah. people come up to me in other cities and go, the bus is empty. Well, go three blocks down and it's full. So, you know, as the, or as the population later is, and it's, yeah, come back an hour yeah. later and it, it, the people are falling out the windows. Um, and then you, then they, there's a different complaint, but it, yes. it's, <laughs> it's all about trying to present the information in a way people can digest it. Got it. So. Um, your hour-long meetings with the supervisors, do you hope to do that, plan to do that before December 13th or afterwards? Yes, at before, because we need their input <laughs> in order to go to the December 13th meeting. If not, if we don't get it done by then, we're going to have to shove that out. Okay, okay. So that um, is the a reason I'm pressing a little bit here is I think – understand, understand, and, and uh, um, I, uh, understand that there's work to be done. The board will want to – you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, look, look forward to, you know, the uh, having the, uh, the, the the requisite level of uh, uh, of, of confidence in, in what you've done. You know, Tom will work with the board, Tom Bitsani, of course, the schedule. We, we recognize all that. Um, you know, what the part of the reason I'm asking is I'm, I'm very curious, of course, but also um, there might be, as you mentioned, some TAC members in having one of those meetings at some point. We don't want to get into your critical path, uh, you know, prior preparing for your meeting there perhaps to to help you if, if it's another uh, uh data point as you as you look at some of the, some of the details there um but you know we have working sessions um you know uh on alternate during during the month we do something like that we can conceivably do it in a, in a tech meeting although i'd hesitate to do that and i'm not this is not an invitation necessarily it's also sort of a trial balloon for some of our our tech members we can consider that or something like that because i know i'd be interested in seeing some more of the details there um, I have an engineering degree. I've done a bit of math myself, not economics, though. Um, <laughs> kind of intrigued to see, you know, uh, you know, sort of what's what's behind it. Because uh, 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 yes, the devil's in the details, but there's a lot of um, good, juicy information there. I know, I, I, I we can tell, and uh, I really, uh, I really appreciate you having to spend all this effort to do this. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. I think. Uh, um, one very quick question, and then then I will uh, 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 stop with my questions and make sure there's no other questions there. But um, how the 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 uh, uh, the, the transit uh, um, 
transit strategic plan here. How does it relate to the comprehensive plan? Um, is there a uh, is it a parallel activity? Is there a crossover? Um, this um, in fact, this tr strategic vision that you're seeing right here. Elements of this cross reference with the comprehensive plan. So yeah. the goal of the comprehensive plan is to develop develop a multimodal transportation system in Fairfax County. That's the crossover. That's the link between and that it would be a you know safe, reliable, clean system. And okay. that's the connection that we use. So we didn't change okay. that and there's no need to. Got it. Uh, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, are there any final questions? We've got a little long, but but I think it's very a, a very good presentation, very good information. Are there any other questions that uh, commissioners have uh, on this on this topic here? I wanted to to close yeah. and say that, that Michael, you know that I've been pushing for it for a year and a half at least. So really appreciative of the work you've done here and putting it together. Also appreciate your comment about the danger of too much data being heavy handed. Uh, if you look at your screens, you can see uh, one of our one of our members is endorsing that concept uh, that uh, that it does die at times. But uh, watch the kind of regularly the NBC news to, you know, the three broadcasts. They have, you know, at the close of the broadcast, they right now it's called there's good news later they'll they'll have something else but you know at the end of the day i i would love to see uh i would love to see your department your success story in an underserved area and getting people to you know see that splashed on the national news so i wish you every success on this thank you that's what we're working for and oh, by well, the way, everyone, on. the person who did all the math is Hei Jun. So she's the one that did all the, a lot of the math on all this work. So, um, you know, it's a little claps to her because she she did a tremendous amount of work to build this. Now, in the future, we won't be doing it this way. We are building ourselves a model that will do it mm -hmm. for us. So we will have a um, computer software during generated model it's called tbast so the mm -hmm. next time we do this plan we won't be doing it the way we do it today we'll be doing it slightly different but all the same inputs go into it well kudos to her as i don't leave anybody out i mean that that's a mercy crunch so good on her very much so very much so i i have to ask another question very briefly and this is definitely uh, you know something we could follow up later particularly if we get together to talk numbers and things like that, but predicting, projecting where folks are, where they want to go for bus transportation, got it. Is there a corollary to this or something very similar that could be used for projecting where people live, where they want to drive to? Um, yeah, it's called the travel demand roads. model. Okay. It's called the travel demand model. It was started back in the 50s. I've actually used the model myself. I used to be a highway planner long ago mm -hmm. then I became a transit planner then I went back to highway now I'm a transit planner again um, the MCOG actually runs the model the FCDOT yeah. has a division which they actually we uh, work with them that actually mm -hmm. generates the results of the model um, we take subsections of that model and uh, we do our own analysis based on corridor studies so we already have that model and that model also has a subsection to it um, known as the mo the modal model, and it calculates mm -hmm. uh, modal trips or transit trips and non-vehicle trips. And that's all generated off of a, um, what's known as a production and attraction, where people live and where they want to go. And that's all based on demographics and travel patterns and a utility curve. So yeah, I used to spend part of my life on that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, where there's where there's numbers, there's there's math can be can be, can be hammered on it. Um, just a, uh, just a data point that uh, the TAC and the Board of Supervisors are going to have a joint meeting probably in January, 
we were looking at alternate measures of effectiveness for uh, you know, transit modeling, development, streets, and things like that. So not directly connected, but everything's you know perfectly connected at least. So appreciate the the answer there, and and uh, that 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 makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you everyone. Um, and have a good evening. Yes. Thank you very Thank much, you. Michael. And hey June as well. Thank you for doing all yes. the work. We know you're behind the scenes. Thank you. It's really the teams teams work together. Thanks. Yes. Fantastic. That's that's how it works. Absolutely, that's how it works. So okay. Um well appreciate Is it. Is it okay much. if we, we drop off? Oh, absolutely. You're, you're welcome to stay, but we, we understand you'll uh, you probably got some things to do. So, yes, please do. Please do drop off. Thank you again for taking the time to join us here this evening. OK, well, thank you all. Have a okay. good evening. Thanks. Okay. Good, bye. Yep. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. And team. Thanks. Number cruncher. <laughs> we, we'd rather not uh, see uh, Calvin apply to Roger. <laughs> there we go. There we go. OK. Um, Next item, and I don't want to spend too much time on it, um, but just to uh, discuss the uh, joint meeting uh, agenda, uh, agenda there. You know, we did discuss that uh, uh, last meeting. I think we did a very good job of laying out uh, some of our, uh, you know, planned next steps. Um, you know, uh, we'll talk in just a little bit about our, our upcoming meetings, um, including a tutorial we're planning to have on AMOE and things like that uh, in December. Um, and so, uh, really, uh, I don't have a, uh, uh, a fleshed out agenda yet. We've talked about it. Um, and so, uh, I wanted, to, I, I have this on the agenda, uh, in case there's some things we, we needed to talk about and certainly welcome to, uh, open for some questions if we need to, but I don't think it's something we need to uh, go over, uh, uh, specifically, um, at this, at this time. I do believe that it's very likely that the, uh, uh, the joint meeting probably will be till January. Uh, I will note that the December 13th BTC meeting, they currently have on their tentatively uh, draft agenda additional measures of effectiveness. So I'll reach out to uh, Mr. Al uh, Mr. Alcorn, uh, see what his thoughts are on you know uh, that topic. If the board wants to have that discussion there, plus one with us or delay. So, uh, but we'll uh, we'll coordinate with them on uh, on that. So, okay. Um, unless there's any other questions or observations about our, our joint meeting, uh, move on to the uh, uh, public comment period. Um, and so if there are any members of the public here who would like to comment, uh, now would be the opportunity. I don't think there is, but wanted to open the uh, open the floor. OK, sounds good. Um, other business and announcements. Um, the uh, 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 just wanted to uh, uh, briefly d discuss, um, you know, the 2022 uh, TAC award. Um, uh, Christy, thanks for your uh, uh, per willingness previously to participate. Uh, Jerry Hancock, who's not here this evening, is the uh, 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 will be the chair of the activity. Roger will be uh, uh, joining them as well to uh, uh, to make the. Uh, uh, the selections there. Calvin, I know that the uh, my solicitation went out, you know, late September. Very much appreciate you getting that out. Um, uh, has there been any uh, uh, any responses yet? Have you seen uh, on no. that? No, that there's been no nomination or anything like that. Yeah. OK, so I, I might so have to run it again. Yeah. OK, um, one of the things that I think we can do um, is uh, on the 1st of November, uh, we'll be handing out the 2021 TAC award. Um, and so that is uh, now going to be at 930 in the morning on Tuesday, November the 1st. Um, I will be there and hope as many commissioners as possible uh, who are uh, available, please do come in and, and join us for that. Uh, it'll be a couple of minutes uh, uh, sort of at the beginning of the uh, the Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, you know read the certificate and you know hand the uh, hand out the uh, uh, the award. Uh, there'll be a couple of remarks and things like that. So again, if, if folks are interested and available, hope you can uh, hope you could join us there. But at that uh, time, you can also uh, mention again that the uh, 2022 tech board the nominations are are open. Um, if we need to uh, encourage various parts of CDOT and others to uh, to uh, uh, solicit nominations, we can we can do that. 
but uh, uh, I'm, I'm confident we'll be able to find some 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 good candidates there. So, okay. Um, next, the agenda for our November 2022 TAC meeting. Um, if you look at the uh, uh, on our agenda, we've got two uh, uh, two topics here, um, and sort of two and a half topics there, or three. So um, we definitely wanted to talk about the you know the follow up to the parking near parking reimagined project. Uh, Calvin, I understand that uh, Michael Davis wanted to come back and talk to us, so that's at his uh, his request. So we're happy to do that. Yes. Um, thank you. I just I thought so. Just wanted to be sure. Um, the Richmond Highway update and or the speed safety study. Um, Pete, is uh, is that sort of the same? I know it's related. It's Richmond Highway, but um, is that two names for the same thing or are they slightly different? Because it seemed to make sense to have them together, but I wanted to discuss that. If in fact they are two things. You're muted, Pete. I was being polite and didn't say anything. Um, speed study stands by itself, but what was the other? Uh, I, I miss uh, Richmond Highway update. You know, sort of. I think we're going to have a general Richmond Highway update. Part of the idea was it was sort of a backdrop regarding the design of roads today, yeah. Yeah. trying to shift to designing them a bit different in the future. Real world yeah. example. We're not trying to re adjudicate Richmond Highway, although we know there's still ongoing discussions there, but just for us to have a sense as to what Richmond Highway was like, what kind of issues uh, are, are raised there. So we've got that in our mind as we uh, uh, you know, have the AMOE discussion. They're definitely two different items. Um, this okay. Speed studies running down a different different path. Uh, the okay. One is the BRT bus rapid transit turn lane analysis. Um, mm -hmm. That will that will give us hopefully the update on um, how wide this road is going to be and what the final plan looks like. Uh, that. I don't I don't have a definite date on that, but it, I know they already gave their uh, presentation to the board, but I don't know okay. when when they're going to let us know. OK, speed study is supposed to be by year in. OK, um, I would I from what you've described it, it sounds like the more important for the tag is to get sort of a general Richmond Highway update. Uh, would you yeah. agree? Definitely. The, okay. the, the, that one's ready. Uh, it should be that ready. One's ready. That one, yeah, because they've given their final report to the uh, Board Transportation Committee, the way I understand it through Dan Stork. Uh, I do not okay. have the results of that. Uh, but okay. So they should be ready to come in front of us. So it just, Fantastic. just, just takes an invite. Okay. Calvin, do we know? Exactly, or Pete, or uh, exactly who's doing that, so we know who to, uh, you know, tug on their sleeve and ask them to come, come see us if they could on the fifteenth of November. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I have to ask them. It, it, it was okay. It, we can look. It's, it's probably under the BRT group. Um, yeah. But I think this is probably V dot is leading that project, right? Yeah. Well, they did, they did it, but it was in conjunction with FC dot. So V dot tend to tends to be the one that gives the presentation, but FC right. God is, is, you know, working with them. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I, I yeah, I, I will ask around and see. Okay. But I, I think, think do... Go ahead, Pete, I'm sorry. That's that's okay, that's all. I think they should be ready. <laughs> oh. Well, what I was, what I was gonna ask is, do you think we should, do we want VDOT to come with us? Oh, sorry, to, to come as well, or just huddle up with FC dot um, and they can tell us what's going on, what they think about it. Uh, my opinion is some some of the roadway is definitely being done just by VDOT. Uh, okay. The areas that are not being uh, have the BRT. Uh, and, okay. and basically it breaks at Costco on Richmond Highway. Okay. Everything north of Costco is uh, FC dot. Everything south of Costco is F, uh, VDOT. So you can't uh, exclude VDOT. Yeah, so yeah. I, I yeah. think having both is the right way to go. And they've done a lot of joint pre presentations, so they play nice together. OK, well, that's good. Um, and, and boy, I, I take my hat off to both. Uh, um, 
they they have really listened to pe people's input. They have not given us everything the local citizens want, but at the same time, they took it all seriously and and have made some tough calls. And I think it was at sixty or seventy percent of what what the local people were looking for, they got. So that's that's not bad. That's not. I'm glad you said that because that's what I was thinking. That's not bad, given the momentum and the history and the type of road it is, et cetera, et cetera, to be able to uh, you know st start turning you know the uh, the ocean liner is, is good. Oh well, yeah, but is it? I've been told VDOT has never turned the ocean liner before. So uh, that's not true. So I mean, it, and really, when you're in meetings with VDOT at this time. On these subjects, especially like the speed study, it shows deeply that they've been listening mm -hmm. and they're they're coming around to some of the more enlightened thinking. So, okay. um, FC dot I think is ahead of them on the curve, um, and so they're they're playing nicely together again. Good. You're, you're having a little well, better luck. Do you think it's okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, many years in the same trench. So, it's going to say on the. Unfortunately, on the Braddock Road multimodal, when we went from FC dot to V dot, um, it, it there. I'll, I'll leave it at that. But, um, but, but don't don't get me wrong. Not everything is you know roses, but um, it, 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 at least we didn't get all manure, so it was good. You know, years ago we had a commissioner, the Northern Virginia commissioner for V dot. Then went on chief engineer and I, his name escapes me. But I tell you, when he was up here, I, I really got the sense that they were turning it around. And, you know, maybe the last couple of years, I wonder if they, they, they're retrenching to their old ways a little bit. But we'll see. I do believe it depends on who you talk to. Um, yeah, probably. I think, I think it really does. It, you know, it, there is not uniformity throughout. Um, um, we, we have some new people over on Richmond Highway, which uh, really changed some of the thinking. So. Sounds good. Well, uh, Calvin, do you believe, uh, can you extend the invitation uh, to both FC Dad and VDOT to come and do that jointly? Do you think uh, I would need to reach out to, to VDOT or something? I, it doesn't sound like it, but uh, um, do you feel comfortable uh, trying to get both of them to come? That you think yes, would be okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. If there's issues, let us know. But it sounds encouraging, and they're they're working well together, and they probably both want to be there. So hopefully they can hopefully they can do that. So, okay. Well, the speed safety study we'll you know look at later, something like that. What we'll do then is we'll follow up on the parking rear and reimagine project, and the Richmond Highway update as as well too. So, uh, Calvin, one of the things we'll want to know is is how much time. Uh, uh, Michael Davis would like to have because um, these are two, you know, important topics, and uh, you know, want to make sure we've got time to to go over them. So and I'll work on trying to get a time frame for us, the speed study. Okay. Um, and just just FYI, uh, parking reimagining group is coming to a joint planning and zoning and transportation meeting in the Mount Vernon uh, MVCCA uh, in. The, November 7th. So, okay. All right. Yep. So they'll be able to tell us how things went, it sounds like now. We'd be glad to. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. So, um, sorry. So you want to presentation on uh, November 15, right? Right. Okay. We would like the uh, the parking reimagine study, the update from, uh, from uh, Michael Davis. Right. And um, the Richmond Highway update from FC. Well, VDOT and FC dot. VDOT and FC. Okay, yes. Okay. Yeah. Does he need to tell them both all both parties, three parties, that they're they're what's it a shared agenda? The whole meeting and part but they don't have the whole meeting. Sorry, Kevin, you're breaking up. You you have well we often have two topics. More than one. Well we often have more than one topic. Um, okay. You no, know, but, but they should. Yes, but I, no, I, I, will, I will find out how how much time that uh, that they they need for 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 their presentation. Yeah. Yeah, that hits it. Thanks, Calvin.
and and you know certainly want to be respectful of, the, of their time you know my thought is michael's might be uh shorter you know we'll find out in which case we can let him go uh, first uh and then we have a bit more time on the uh richmond highway if we uh, if, if we need it there but but yeah calvin let me know uh what uh, what michael says on the timing and uh and we'll uh, then we'll see so i'm making a note here okay okay all right um now the uh, uh the next discussion is on the uh, uh december uh agenda and uh we had talked before uh, last meeting about having an introduction to additional measures of effectiveness. Um, I did reach out to uh, uh, to Rachel. She's happy to join us uh, for that for that conversation. Um, so we can find uh, uh, she's a good source of knowledge on her on her own, but would also like to get some folks in the county to help us sort of really give us kind of a tutorial about what a AMOE is, what some of these measures are. So that we've got uh, a bit better understanding of, of what we're getting ourselves into, um, and 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 have that in our in our uh, you know in our in our mind as we then meet uh, you know with the with the with the board jointly. Um, so I don't know, maybe well I don't think we need to have you know drag Mr. Severson in <laughs> to do that. Um, you know I, I don't rule it out if that's something that he would he would like to do. Um, but uh, uh, Calvin, if you could um, you know inquire. Who might be a good person to give us a tutorial on AMOE and things like that? Um, that's that's the kind of person I think we'd like to um, try to have come I, in. I think he might be the the one who's leading the presentation that I I'll, I'll find out from him. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I, I think we uh, if he wants to come, if he wants to do it, we're absolutely he's absolutely welcome. But I don't want to, you know, uh, sort of expect him to come to to do that for a, for a for a tutorial. But again, he's he's very welcome if that's what he'd like to do, or if he's got a suggestion of, of somebody that would be, uh, uh, I would say more uh, more appropriate, whatever somebody else, and he can would would welcome and him too. Also, they might be they might be also presented at the December 13 uh, board transportation committee meeting. I think this is one of the possible topics for that for that meeting. So, it is. Yeah. It is absolutely. Um, and that's something, as I mentioned, I'm going to talk to uh, Mr. Alcorn about and see what his thoughts are. Obviously, the board will do what the board chooses to do, <laughs> um, oh, but uh, based upon our conversation previously, um, I know there's uh, uh, at least there'll be at least be some thought as to whether it's um, more effective to delay the conversation in January. Um, I guess one possible option is is we do a joint meeting in December. You know, we haven't completely ruled it out. Um, you know, and so, uh, you know, that, you know, uh, uh, that is uh, a possibility, I suppose. Um, you know, I, I, you know, it'd be a shame because we, we might have to do the tutorial earlier or something like that. We have to do some, some juggling there, but, uh, but I'll reach out to, uh, to Mr. Alcorn and see what he's, see if he's thinking about that uh, to confirm whether, uh, the AMOE is, is on the calendar in December for the BTC, and even if it is, that doesn't preclude us from having a joint meeting with the board on that topic. Um, so just, just sort of st stay tuned um, for that. I, th I think a tutorial could be helpful. That that subject is as dry as dust, and my eyes uh, glaze over faster than Rogers tonight when that AMO leave. So, um, good idea. <sighs> Well, actually, uh, uh, to sort of try and incentivize a little bit there, one thought that occurred was it is December, and right now the meeting is scheduled for the 20th. We've moved meetings up at uh, various uh, in, in the past. I won't say we can't do it again, but what I'm thinking about is that uh, that might be something we can do in person, um, and afterwards, um, and this would be the only item on the agenda, um, we could go out and, and uh, have a celebratory uh, 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 Drinks and uh, uh, not alcoholic, non-alcoholic food somewhere, you know, afterwards if we choose to do that. So that could then be a, a holiday event for us on that uh, on that Tuesday. Um, so if there's interest there, and, and of course if Rachel's there, Rachel of course would be invited. Um, 
and uh, uh, you know, and we invite uh, 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 significant others as well. I, I know we we had uh, our uh, partners with us last year, and and uh, I think it was a very good time. It, it seemed, people seem to enjoy it, um, and so. What do folks think about having a holiday event um, that evening? The, the evening of the our December meeting. Yes. Yeah. So we would yeah. have so the December twenty meeting would be in person. The one topic would be the tutorial, and then afterwards we would uh, head out for uh, uh, some holiday celebration. Okay. I'm in. Okay. There's one. Roger's in. <laughs> he is. He, he just put his thumbs up, but you didn't see him. There we go. I think, Roger, I think you might. Oh, okay. Um, I know the one concern. There we go. One concern we've had is admittedly the meeting is a little late in the month. Um, I'd like to keep it that day uh, because one, if you go up, if we move up a month, that's the same day as the as the board transportation commission meeting, and you know I, I don't think this is going to be a, a huge amount of crossover there, um, but um, I would like to try and keep this on the twentieth. But recognize folks have holiday plans, um, you know, uh, so there the you know, we recognize that there might be some folks who are not able to come, but that is that is what I'm thinking as of now. Okay. Okay, um, so that is uh, December. Um, the uh, um, I think for I, I do have on the agenda, you know, talking about future uh, uh, agenda topics. Um, I think one of the things that we have. Uh, Try to use as a guide is the uh, uh, is the the work plan that we uh, we put together um, and uh, Felicia um, and Christy I don't know if I've sent it to you um, but uh, you know can send you that plan uh, it's we presented it to the board of supervisors on uh, uh, March the first of, of this last year and it describes uh, uh, the the areas we're focusing on and that's something that um, our uh, using as a sort of a, uh, a check mark as it were or a check the box um, about uh, uh, possible topics to uh, uh, try and make sure we're uh, moving forward on the things we've set our, our priorities um, you know just to remind folks briefly one focus area transit oriented development um, that's kind of what we're talking about here with uh, AMOE and, and things like that um, you know street design stuff so we're very much you know on message right there um, vehicle congestion mitigation, um, which had been a lot of it had been sort of transportation demand management, telework and things like that. Um, I did reach out to a, a data, uh, Dulles Area Transportation Association. They've been doing some work in the area. I've not heard back from them yet, so I'll, I'll reach out again. Um, I think at some point it's, it would be very helpful to have a discussion about two years in, <laughs> two years of two, almost three years into the pandemic. Um, how it has affected, uh, you know, traffic and teleworking and commuting and things like that, um, just to sort of keep up with those kinds of those kind of conversations. Um, trails, sidewalks, and bikeways is another focus area. Um, our two lead commissioners in the, the that area uh, both have resigned from the, from the TAC. Um, you know, uh, uh, Christy, Felicia, um, being new, there's an opportunity to get involved in those areas. But we won't pigeonhole you there. We'll let you get comfortable, you know, decide what you like, where you'd like to focus, things like that. And and uh, and really, we like to, uh, I'd like to talk to both of you offline, just you know, get a get a sense for what you're thinking, what you'd like to do, and things like that. Because ultimately, of course, want to make sure that you are uh, getting what you need out of the service as well, and, and what your uh, what your supervisor is 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 hoping that uh, that you're that you're going to get. Um, and particularly, Felicia, Mr. Alcorn, you know, direct connection there with the uh, you know with the board transportation committee. Um, you know, the other is uh, strategies and policies. Uh, I did reach out to uh, uh, Jeremy um, to try and uh, see where the, the comprehensive plan is. Not uh, um, uh, sort of noteworthy uh, uh, progress yet, but he's, he's going to reach out there as well too. Um, that could be, a, uh, uh, it's something we want to uh, 
keep connected with it was partly what was behind my question with the comprehensive plan connection with the uh, the transit plan there areas to monitor legacy infrastructure you know non pov transportation solutions and things like that i did share an article with uh, with with tac members about uh um, dulling enthusiasm, perhaps for autonomous vehicles. Uh, Eric did not seem surprised with that, uh, not a, you know, which was not a surprise, because it's turning out to be very difficult to do. So just, just kind of interesting there. Um, and so uh, uh, with that, uh, I don't want to take time now to sort of pick agenda topics for January and, and February. There, um, I think we will have time to uh, to do that. Um, the good thing, to, depending on when the uh, joint meeting is. I'm anticipating January, but I don't know for sure. Don't know, of course. Um, you know, uh, we will then, uh, you know, pick up the, pick up the conversation there and, and do some other things, and then we'll be soon be uh, soon be time to do our yearly update on what we've done and, and what we're planning to do. So uh, um, how time flies when you're having fun. Um, so that's what I had for uh, for agenda topics. Um, unless there are no questions, we have sort of a new item kind of speak on the agenda here we'll see how this goes <laughs> we've had some conversations and and calvin uh, uh brent um uh, marcus i'm sure you know talked a little bit about it there one of the things that we uh, uh discussed is um sort of maintaining connections with and uh, uh with topics we've had come in the past um you know uh, making sure that things we've discussed um you know we uh, you know don't completely lose track of so, for instance, today uh, talking about potentially um, uh, having uh, Michael come back uh, uh, with uh, um, Heiju to talk the numbers, you know, uh, could be an example there of something where we want to follow up and, and learn a little bit more. Um, but one thing I was hoping is that uh, uh, to help us keep uh, uh, keep aligned on things was going to give uh, FC dot the opportunity to uh, uh, give us a a quick update um, of things that have happened on items of concern to us, briefings we've had, meetings we've had, things on the work plan and stuff like that, um, just to help uh, keep us up to speed on things because uh, uh, some may hear, many don't, uh, a chance, like I say, uh, uh, you know, not lose the bubble there. So with that kind of long-winded intro, uh, uh, Calvin, uh, anything to uh, uh, you'd like to uh, let us know about uh, this month, about things that are happening that we uh, 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 that you think we might be interested in? Um, not right now. We um, have discussed about that. Um, I have just talked with Noel, um, my division chair, and mm -hmm. uh, she and and Tom Bashani has some conversation, and they would like to invite you. Um, you know, over for for a meeting. I mean, virtually, okay. so they can um, uh, they they can have a, a brainstorm or discussion on on what you like uh, them to do. So uh, we're still looking for a day for that. So okay. I uh, probably next week or sometime this week or next week we'll send you an email and ask asking you for your availability. Sure. So we can set up a meeting and um, I guess from from that meeting you we can uh, go from the uh, you know from that to to get the the, the update from FCDOT on, on a monthly basis. Yeah. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. That that that's fair and I appreciate that. Um, would like to invite Pete to, to join us there. As long as we just got two, we can do it. Sure. We don't yes. just turn into attack meeting. Pete, if you're available, um, you know. So yeah, love to love to have the conversation there. Okay. As long and, uh, as next. Long as next as week, as sorry. As sorry. As double. As long as I'm not double booked, uh, absolutely, I'll be there. Sounds yeah. good. We'll 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 try and find a time when you are. No, we'll try and find a time when you're okay <laughs> and and uh, and get that scheduled. No problem. So, okay. Uh, all right. Um, OK, thank you, Calvin. I appreciate that. Looking forward to a, a conversation there. Um, the uh, 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 next, the, uh, the uh, chairman's report here, just a couple things I wanted to uh, 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 mention is, um, let's see. Um, Actually, I've touched upon most of the things I wanted to mention in various parts of the evening. Um, we talked about the November 21, the November 1st uh, TAC award presentation. Um, the the one thing that I was going to uh, uh, to add is, um, as as many of you know, uh, I was the uh, um, TAC representative to the Confederate Names uh, Task Force. 
uh, that uh, uh, recommended to the Board of Supervisors the uh, renaming of Lee Highway and uh, Lee Jackson Memorial Highway. Um, uh, some of you may have seen, but wanted to let you know if you hadn't, that the Board of Supervisors did decide to rename the streets, which was a sort of a foregone conclusion. The question is what they want to name them to. And what they're looking at here is naming it Route 29 and Route 50. Um, uh, I'll admit I uh, uh, made a suggestion uh, for uh, uh, Lee Highway to the uh, Lincoln Douglas, i.e. Frederick Douglas Highway. Eh, um, I, I'm not sure that was necessarily, uh, 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 I thought it was a good idea at the time, but I also recognize that uh, um, this is something that is, it's very difficult to pick names for things. <laughs> and so going with Route 29, Route 50, I think the board feels it's going to be an easier transition. I know some of the things they're looking at is does this help with lowering the cost for, you know, changing addresses and things like that. So they're still looking at that. There's issues with the post offices and, and stuff like that. But I did just want to let uh, uh, commissioners know that, uh, that that's proceeding and, and the board has decided to rename the streets to Route 29 and, and Route 50. So, um, and that's what I have. Um, and so here we are, um, actually pretty early in the, in, in, the, in, in the evening here, relatively speaking, um, and ahead of schedule, which doesn't often happen. So uh, uh, Felicia, we'll, uh, we'll credit you for, uh, you for that. Um, but at this point in the evening, what I'd like to do is, is go through the uh, uh, commissioners, ask for the commissioners updates. I'll go through the, uh, the list in the order that I call your name on the, uh, on the, uh, the, the, the roster. And let us know if you've got anything you'd like to uh, uh, like to add. So with that, uh, Linda Sperling is not with us. Uh, Kevin Morse, Commissioner Morse, anything from you, sir? Yeah, a couple of quick things. It, uh, I was disappointed when my did you did you catch any of that earlier? With what, were you hearing me at all? Sorry, I hadn't had that problem before. <clears throat> wow, Kevin, you really broke up. I'm sorry. Did you say? Okay, so well, that's my help. question. I, I wonder what it is tonight because I, I hadn't had that problem before yeah. at, uh, my laptop. Uh, now you're you're fine right that moment, yeah. Well, let's let's hope it's a one then. And yeah. I mentioned is that our, our previous uh, uh, not so long ago vice chairman lives in Herndon as well. So maybe he'll run into Mary. <laughs> uh, that's right. Right. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, appreciate it. Okay, um, let's see. I've gone on and on. Uh, actually, our newest member, uh, Hunter Mill District, uh, uh, Felicia Woods. Welcome. Anything you'd like to uh, to add to the mix here this evening? No, just uh, grateful to be here and I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Thanks very much, and we're very much looking forward to working with you. And, and thanks for joining us and taking the time to to, to serve the community. Um, it's nice to have someone under fifty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Linda's below fifty at least. So, and Christy, we're not going to judge, but yeah, there's too many over fifty, so it's it's about time. Um, okay. Uh, speaking of somebody, admittedly over fifty. Uh, Mason District, Roger Hoskin. Sir, anything you like well, to Well, I just wish I were 50 again. <laughs> I would have anything to add. Yeah, I, I, that's nice. The commission is getting kind of a little sclerotic. So. No, okay. no comment. No. All right, appreciate it. Um, our vice chair, oh, I'm not going to go in the order. I'm going to save the vice chair to the end because he's got a special role at the end. So, Pete, I'll be coming back to you. Um, Providence District, I don't believe uh, Jeremy has joined us. Just want to be sure. Eric Thiel is not here. David Skiles. Uh, Christy Garden. Good evening. Anything you'd like to add? You're still with us? Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, nope, I am all good. Add me to the under 50 club. Happy to serve and uh, look forward to being on the next call with you all. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much. OK, uh, now uh, to our uh, uh, vice chair um, to uh, make any final remarks and 
make the long anticipated uh, end of meeting motion, but not to prejudge. Pete, anything well, to answer? I, I see by the count I have until 930. So that's four more minutes I could speak. But you could. instead, I'd like to just again say it was a real pleasure being with all you tonight. We learned some good stuff. We have a new member and that's amazing and welcomed. And so I motion to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Is it seconded? Seconded. Second. Radic. Kevin must have. We just can't hear him this time. There we go. There's a motion on the floor and seconded to adjourn. Um, privilege motion. I uh, understand hearing. Is there any debate on the motion? No debate. Hearing no debate on the motion. All those in favor of the motion and adjourning, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Hearing none, the, uh, the motion is carried unanimously. At 9.27, we are adjourned. Thank you very much, commissioners. Look forward to our thank next you. meeting. Thank you all, and th thank you, as always, our illustrious leader.